Well, a very good evening here on the uh, third uh, day of August 23. I'm up in Glen Quaker, as you probably recognise, with uh, a view of Craigach, uh, Craigulloch. I um, I was enjoying some sunshine coming through the the whole uh, region. Just uh, those splits and rays from the uh, the sun as it reaches its uh, western edge, you know. But it's clouded over again. There's still some remnants of the sunshine away over towards the hills to the east there, but uh, oh, it was beautiful going through the glen. I was quite, uh, well, I was chuckling away. I don't, I don't uh, wish any malice on tomorrow's uh, cycle race through the glen, but uh, it has inconvenienced many people. I mean, there's lots of shepherds and farmers that need to be, you know, changing the livestock from one field to the next. They can't do that tomorrow in case there's any problems. And there's delivery vehicles can't get through. There's data posts. There's um, tourism can't uh, progress as normal. You know, people trying to, you know, get somewhere. Maybe trying to get down and catch a flight. I don't know, there's lots and lots of uh, situations where people have been inconvenienced because of a damn cycle race, but I mean, it only happens for, I don't know how often it's going to happen, but I think the uh, the model of the story for most people is at least everybody got the potholes uh, filled in who live on the route of the cycle race, otherwise you'd still be crunching tyres and breaking springs on their wheels on, uh, on their motor vehicles. So for this uh, cycle race, I'm, I'm rather grateful that uh, uh, the whole uh, stretch from uh, my ho house uh, all the way up to uh, Aberfeldy has been mended. So, yeah. And uh, But I was chuckling away, as I say, because many of the, uh, the arrow indicators for the cyclist's benefit, of course, uh, in big yellow and black, uh, <laughs> When they've uh, placed them into the ground and uh, nailed them there, I don't think they realise that the, the wind is quite powerful up uh, these glens, and uh, so now most of the arrows are pointing in a different direction. And of course, if you're a, a cycle travelling at uh, 40 or 50 miles an hour or something, um, it's just not. I mean, that's not uh, unusual for these cyclists to be zooming along at that rate. Uh, they'll see the arrow and it'll take them into the nearest hedge or barbed wire fence or something. But, um, yeah, there's another uh, culprit, not culprit, uh, another person who'll be inconvenienced will be tractor drivers. The bailers are out. You know, there shouldn't be harvest. They want to get. I mean, these people will all be wanting to do things and uh, and told they can't start at a certain time or they've got to go home at a certain time. I mean, it's just nonsense. And Friday's the wrong day for this. Uh, a lot of people will be uh, very irate if they're caught in traffic tomorrow, being the weekend. But uh, there we go. It's a lovely view of our church end, isn't it? I haven't been back to see Florence for a little while. But, uh... I was at the church on the 16th of July. I don't think I loaded anything about that. I don't think so. But it was a wonderful service. The, the usual minister was on holiday, so it was our replacement. And uh, she was very, very nice to talk to that lady. And, uh, and the parishioners still don't know it was me. It uh, planted up the, uh, the box outside. And that's the way I wanted it. Look, the sun's coming through for you, Annie. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It really is. Absolutely gorgeous. If you can focus, that is, boy. It truly really is. It's, a, it's just wonderful. But, um... So there's... There's not a lot to, to report. Uh, I'm thinking of, actually... Well, perhaps, uh going up to some elevation tomorrow. If I can get up the road quick enough, I might park up somewhere safely and then try and head up uh, 
the Scotland or something like that on the eastern flank of, sorry, the western flank of the small glen and uh, try and get some uh, ele elevated pictures of the cyclists coming through just for posterity, you see. But, uh, and I'm going to write to Cadbury's. Um, uh, see, I, that was another thing that was inconvenient. My Fortnum Mason order, um, I asked them not to deliver this week, uh, well, for Friday at least, the 4th of August, and uh, so it's not coming till next Tuesday now. And I've, uh, I'm all out of uh, my favourite dark chocolate uh, macadamia nut uh, biscuits at uh, Fortnum Mason. Uh, have a, and I, uh, I normally buy a couple of packets. I mean, I know they're almost 14 pounds a packet, but they're absolutely delicious. They really are. They're absolutely delicious. And um, so I thought myself, I'm out of them. Uh, these macadamia. So I, I zipped down to uh, the low vibrational store at uh, B&M today, and um, I looked around. There's nothing really at all like these macadamias. Um, macadamia nuts, and um, so I end up buying this Cadbury snack ball. Well, I remember we used to get a Cadbury snack ball almost the same size as a whole bloody packet. Well, it was about that size, wasn't it, Andy? Yes, it was. And now they've told us the six biscuits in here. Well, I'm going to write to Cadbury asking them when did they start putting the chocolate biscuit into tumble dryers before they packaged them. And uh, I might call them actually, probably best of calling them, they understand what I'm talking about then. Um, I don't want a lot of communication back and forth trying to explain the same situation, so I'll phone them and say, customer service please, and uh, I, w I want to inquire about why you're tumble drying your chocolate biscuits. And. Uh, if you want what I'm talking about, I'll say, well, have you tried the Cadbury snack? This is uh, the packets for one. Um, I mean, it doesn't even fit the... There's no point in having all that wasted paper because look. Look at the damn size of the thing. It's only the size of my thumb. It's not even the size of my thumb. Ridiculous. I mean, what's the point of having the big packet the size of my steering wheel? I mean, it's only like a thing the size of my thumb inside. So I shall be asking them what the hell they're playing at. And, uh, and what's the point of having a big bulky packet like this for six measly chocks inside? It's not even taste good. I can't wait for Fulton and Mason and Tuesday to be perfectly honest. But I do find it's the way with uh, most retail uh, retailers just now and, and food producers. They seem to uh, make everything smaller. I even noticed that uh, Heinz have reduced the size of their uh, tins of tomato soup. I just happened to catch my eye. I don't know if it's been standard for a while, but I've never seen that before. It looks like it's shrunk. It's been in the tumble dryer as well. And uh, the price hasn't come down, of course, and uh, I, I, I don't buy any Heinz products at all now, ever since the time it, uh, when well, was it COVID and they put the price up. and kept putting the price up. I was just sort of, I'm not buying your product. You lose, I mean, you. I think they're, I think they're in the t tw top 20 rich list in the, in the world, the, the Heinz Foundation, the family box. Uh, I don't know why they need any more money. That's that's the problem. So I don't understand why they want to put uh, an additional 20 pence on a tin of soup or 25p for or a pound. Uh, I mean, I think I saw a little bloody tin of beans about that size and they wanted one pound, ten pence in the bloody co-op. And uh, buy three for three pounds. I thought we need to buy bloody uh, 30 for three pounds, you know. Oh, you used to get 30 for three pounds. That's a pro That's a point. I can remember when there were five pence. That was for the large tin. Seven pence, Andy. Go on. No, it was 5p. No, it wasn't, Andy. 
<laughs> it was. It was 15 pence then. Stop arguing with yourselves, sir. It was 5 pence for the small tin, it was 15 pence for the larger variety, wasn't it? Heinz is 57 varieties. You know, 57 ways of fucking ripping off the public. 